So we're going to just review um, a series of 47 patients we've identified. Most of these patients come from Q3 and Q4 of uh, 2019 and kind of how we've been treating these patients. I think a lot of us as interventional pain specialists sometimes get into a rut of doing lumbar epidural steroid injection after lumbar epidural steroid injection. So, you know, I, I did a retrospective review of some of the patients I've decompressed to, to assess how many epidurals they actually underwent before undergoing the decompression, and whether or not they affected that their, um, their outcome postoperatively. Uh, next. So there's 47 patients uh, that I retrospectively reviewed. The mean age was 70 years old with the range from 40 to 92. Um, most of my candidates were female, 66% compared to male, 34%. In terms of spinal comorbidities, I think this is a very important topic to highlight with tonight's talk, and Stephen mentioned it before. You know, I think there's a lot of pain doctors out there looking for that perfect candidate who only has ligamentum flavum hypertrophy with central spinal stenosis. And we know both from the Midas Encore data, that's not the truth and that doesn't really exist in the real world. A lot of these patients we treat have other comorbid conditions that are creating their spinal stenosis. The patients I identified obviously all had hypertrophic ligamentum flavum hypertrophy and that's why they were decompressed. But you can see the majority of my patients had bulging discs, half of them had disc herniations, another half had facet arthropathy of 40% with facet hypertrophy, 20% uh, with uh, lateral recess stenosis, and also 20% with foramenal narrowing. So although we are targeting hypertrophic ligament and flavum with this percutaneous decompression, these patients that we're treating all have comorbid factors, and that actually doesn't actually take take them away from getting this procedure. It actually, in the clinical data, shows that they can actually have a lot of relief with this procedure. So I think, you know, the word on the street used to be that, the, you know, this procedure only treats central stenosis. Um, but in um, looking at the data, both from the Encore study and my own personal data, we see that this isn't the case. Typically, the levels I'm treating um, are 3, 4, and 4, 5. I typically do a bilateral decompression. Um, I have treated 5, 1. Um, there's some patients we've gone up to L1, L2, and some patients we've treated at L2, L3. Um, so by level treated, you can see about 46% um, had one level treated, two levels, 50% uh, of patients, and three levels were 2% of patients. Next slide, please. So this was the retrospective review. I just wanted to see, so patients who've had prior lumbar epidural steroid injections, whether it was one or multiple, we can see that it really did not change their VAS score from um, baseline to three months post-op after being decompressed. So this is kind of just a little bit more data showing that we really shouldn't wait um, to be doing multiple epidurals, a series of epidurals before doing a percutaneous decompression. We're using a 5.1 millimeter portal. This procedure we know is as safe as an epidural steroid injection. My patients go home simply with a steroid strip on their back and a lot of them come back to the office wondering what was done to them because they feel so well and there's minimal scarring. There's really not any evidence of what was done on their back. So we can see that the VAS outcomes post the decompression do not vary based on previous epidural use, whether that was a series, uh, multiple epidurals, or a single epidural. A cumulative effect dose of epidural steroid injections um, prior to doing a percutaneous decompression does not improve any outcomes um, that we saw. And we really should uh, uh, advance to percutaneous decompression to devoid, avoid delays in care. Um, I think Steve mentioned earlier, these patients, they tend to be elderly, Medicare beneficiaries over the age of 65, and they really want a better quality of life. So when I'm talking to my patients about percutaneous decompression, it's not necessarily about the, more about the ability for patients to stand longer and walk longer and do their activities of daily living um, with, with greater distance, being able to travel and, and stand with less pain. Next slide. So using our data, both from the MIDAS um, study and then the data I generated in, in our, the practice I treat out of in, in the Philadelphia area, we see that um, repeat epidural steroid injections, all they're really doing is just delaying treatment of neurogenic claudication doing the PILD. So multiple epidurals prior do not improve the outcomes postoperatively and actually delay the patient receiving appropriate care that can give long-term durable outcomes for them. 
So um, we're trying to eliminate or reduce the use of multiple repeated epidural steroid injections. So for neurogenic claudication patients, physicians in my practice, like myself, have either completely gone away from doing a series of epidural steroid injections or even a single epidural steroid injection. If I'm receiving patients, sometimes I'm the fourth or fifth pain doctor someone see, I'm not going to repeat a series of epidural steroid injections. I'll go right to a, a percutaneous decompression procedure. So our experience in my private practice setting actually mimics what's out there and published in the data. So we know that the procedure is as safe as an epidural. All the patients I've done over the last four years, I'm lucky to say I've never had any complications from those cases, which is great. When I talk to patients about the procedure, I really tell them, listen, you've had epidurals before. This is not going to be any worse, and it's just as safe as the procedures you've had before. We know that the effect of epidural steroid injections on symptoms of neurogenic claudication are limited in their short term. Um, and we, as Andrew mentioned earlier, patients receiving steroids do have increased susceptibility to infection and immunosuppression. So the great thing about this procedure, you don't have to use steroid. If you're worried about taking referrals from your surgical colleagues, uh, I'd encourage you to go to your surgical colleagues and say, give me the patients you don't want to operate on and see what I can do for them. And, and you'll be impressed and um, the patients will go back to those surgeons and then all of a sudden you'll see surgeons start to refer more and more to you for patients they don't want to operate on. You can, you can truly help when you do the decompression procedure. Um, so co spinal comorbidities are not contraindicated. So if patients have disc bulges, disc osteophytes, facet arthropathy, facet hypertrophy, that doesn't preclude those patients from getting a percutaneous decompression. Those patients tend to do very well after we decompress them. 